Virtual reality and augmented reality devices are slowly being implemented into industries, commercial businesses and homes as their ability to make tasks easier and more efficient is improved. One of the biggest current uses for these mediums is for entertainment. And this video explores the extent to how these new technologies will be implemented into one of the biggest commercial industries in the world the film industry. Its main purpose is to give viewers an insight into how movies will evolve to be more fit for today's technological expectations and audiences. The conclusion is made that these technologies positively impact the industry in a way that satisfies those looking for a more immersive experience, not without some compromises. Research found that virtual and augmented reality have become major contributing factors to the evolution of modern day technology and products. They're both designed to create an illusion as if something is there when it really isn't. Some early attempts at creating virtual experiences included panoramic paintings, flight simulators and sensory immersion cabinets, all of which were designed to surround the user's entire field of view, giving the illusion that they were in another environment. Augmented reality, on the other hand, was developed in 1968 and was only used by laboratory universities, businesses and national agencies who were trying to determine how the technology should be implemented into existing products. Today, both these technologies are used for a wide variety of tasks. While the main use of virtual reality currently is in gaming, there are also other virtual experiences where you can transport yourself to a virtual stadium, theatre or museum. It is also being used in healthcare environments where doctors can examine a 3D CAT scan, in the automotive industry to inspect a virtual vehicle before it is manufactured, and in the military to train soldiers before they are deployed. Even NASA has been using VR technology to prepare its astronauts for upcoming missions. Augmented reality, on the other hand, isn't used for as many industry tasks, but it has been very helpful for customers. For example, Printouts with tracking markers have allowed people to view a virtual version of a product. And with the integration of facial recognition technology in recent years, customers have also been able to try on makeup and masks. The same kind of technology is also allowed for apps like Google Translate to replace text in a different language with an English translation in real time. Currently, these new media's role in the industry may be small, but the impact is quite significant as they're giving audiences a chance to see what the future of movies may look like. Research shows that VR film experiences are even being acknowledged at ceremonies like the Sundance Film Festival and the Academy Awards. In 2017, director Alejandro G. Iñárritu, known for films like Birdman and The Revenant, was awarded a special Oscar for the best VR experience. He created a film called Flesh and Sand which used immersion technology to let the viewers step into the shoes of immigrants and refugees. AR is slowly becoming a bigger element as well as it opens potential for computer generated actors, objects and locations that can easily follow instructions from a director at the tap of a button. This has already been demonstrated in a film called Nest created by Duncan Walker. The film uses Apple's AR kit technology meaning that Walker was able to shoot the entire film on just his phone. But research found that the most interesting thing about all this is what veteran directors are saying about it. Canadian director James Cameron, known for Avatar and The Terminator, says, If so much of my bandwidth wasn't taken up with Avatar, I would be experimenting with VR. He also says that he wants to wait a while to see if a new cinema art form is created. I'm waiting for it to manifest, he added. But during the Cannes Film Festival, American director Steven Spielberg says that he thinks that VR technology and its rise could seriously diminish the direction from storytellers. I think we're moving into a dangerous medium with virtual reality. The only reason I say it is dangerous is because it gives the viewer a lot of latitude not to take direction from the storyteller, but make their own choices of where to look," Spielberg said. Therefore, to some, this could be seen as really beneficial, as it would allow them to customise their own interpretation of the storyline being played out. But most film industry professionals don't see it that way, as they think that the viewer could miss out on potentially important plot elements or details. I think the addition of these new technologies will really help film production a lot in the way of, say, art department and things like that, building the sets virtually before they actually build them, which gives them uh, really useful tips and insights into things like 
do we actually have to build the set 10 feet tall, we can just build it 8 feet tall. To me, I think the core of filmmaking is always about story, so that's what's important to me about my process. So it's great if the advancements in technology can help us to achieve that. I don't think when, you know, you look at something like virtual reality, when virtual reality comes into the scene, I don't think that's going to kill cinema. I think it's going to be kind of another platform that people are going to utilise to immerse themselves in the scene. Online research found that the first cinema for providing VR experiences only was opened in Amsterdam in 2016, with more locations being planned for opening in the future. The concept is fairly simple. Viewers arrive at the cinema, they are given a variety of short films to choose from to watch, and then they are given a headset and headphones to put on. They can even sit in swivel chairs to let them see everything around them more easily. It's believed that if this format becomes popular enough, we may be seeing it rolling out in cinemas across the world sometime in the near future if not replacing the current viewing format entirely. As for the home viewing experience, primary and secondary research found that this is now becoming more accessible for mainstream consumers, with high quality head mounted displays like the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift having been on the market for a few years, it's now pretty easy for anyone to bring a decent VR experience into their home. Various movie experiences for these devices are in development, but there are some that are available right now, like Big Screen, a game that lets you use a computer or watch a movie or TV show with friends across the world in virtual reality. It is worth noting that most of these experiences, at this point in time, place you inside a virtual cinema instead of actually inside the film itself. However, key findings show that the advantage of this is that it allows for a lot more customization. Users can change the display size of the screen, and they can even choose whatever content they want to watch because it just mirrors the display of the desktop computer. Most VR film experiences currently are interactive, whether it be an entirely new concept or an adventure based on already popular franchises. For example, Disney has recently been getting in on the VR game with their app, Disney Movies VR. It's a hub that lets you explore many specially optimised experiences for VR based on Disney properties. One of them is Coco VR, Pixar's first dip into the VR craze, based on the highly popular animated film Coco. It's both a narrative adventure as well as a multiplayer game that encourages exploration of the space. Entertaining and pleasant experiences like these imply that one day the higher end headsets may become the standard for becoming immersed in film in VR if interaction is a main element. Of course, for consumers to be given the top of the range experience, they would need to have enough money for the hardware itself, and enough enthusiasm to commit themselves towards purchasing it. The most expensive headset, the HTC Vive, costs around 879 Australian dollars. The Oculus Rift, however, is around 590 Australian dollars, and according to most reviews, delivers an equally immersive experience. Over time, both of these headsets have seen major price reductions, with the slow decrease in price Pricing for these headsets, this may mean that we'll start seeing better headsets in the future that will be better suited for viewing content like a feature length film. Similar to the HTC Vive Pro, which was released headset only on April 5th for 1199 Australian dollars. This means that if you want to get into the VR movie game, it may be wise to wait for a while until we have headsets that work best for viewing that kind of content and until filmmakers have a better grasp of how to adapt films for the virtual space. We're also not at a stage yet where a comfortable experience can be delivered. Even with smaller and lighter headsets like the Samsung Gear VR, a common issue with many of them is that they tend to begin creating some kind of pain on the face after an extended period of time. There are issues in terms of display quality also, as most current head mounted displays have an issue called the screen door effect which lets users see the lines between the pixels. Findings from a survey show that most people who go to the cinema enjoy the experience, but think that it could do with an update of sorts, not only to improve the audience's comfort of the experience, but also the technology that makes it possible. So, is this emerging technology something that audiences want to see more of? Well, sort of. The majority of the survey participants said they would be very interested in seeing VR and AR technology merge with the movie experiences in the cinema and at home. That being said, most people say that they would not like the traditional cinema experience to vanish because of these changes. Another question to ask is, what will this bring to the experience? The 3D trend delivered the illusion as if the objects were right out there in front of you, as if you could reach out and grab them. Survey findings showed that when questioned about what participants think VR and AR could bring to the filmgoer experience, nearly all of them said immersion so it is similar to the 3D experience. But 3D died out relatively quickly. No one had any reassurance from consumers whether it was something that they actually wanted to see. And because of that, every movie was released in a 3D version to the point where it was just 
no longer special anymore. Another problem with the 3D trend was that even though the image looked like it was appearing in front of you, it still had to confine itself within the space of the screen, which is only a certain size. The illusion is completely destroyed if anything moves outside of the screen's border. It can also be a very uncomfortable experience for the viewer in some cases, as different people have issues with their eyesight, and as the image actually hasn't changed distance, it can throw off your focus. I think it will take a long time for people to be comfortable with VR and AR and things like that, because it's like when black and white films were out, when they first like started moving the camera and took it off the tripod, that you know caused a just short of riots kind of thing. There's certain genres definitely, such as horror, where you can really mm. enhance a story by feeling like you're there in the moment. I think every time there's a new advancement in technology, it slightly shifts the way that stories are told, even 3D. There's certain experiences that really suit being shown in 3D or being experienced in 3D and they may not be effective for every type of story, but that advancement has led to other developments in screen storytelling and I think filmmaking as a whole has shifted because of that. I definitely don't believe it's a gimmick. I think AR, especially AR, like look at the Pokemon game on the phones and everybody was running around and playing with these Pokemon. It's augmented reality and you're interacting with things that don't really physically exist but they're on your phone as if they do. And that's phenomenal to me. We're also still waiting for technology that allows 2D footage to be converted into 3D objects and environments to allow the stories to be explored and possibly interacted with by the viewer. But if films become interactive, are they still films or are they just games? And what happens after VR becomes obsolete? These are some of the many unanswered questions, and filmmakers everywhere are still coming to terms with how to make use of these new presentation opportunities. So, to conclude, Virtual and augmented reality are being implemented into the film industry not only to help shape new viewing formats that are no longer just outside of views, but also to make the creative process more simplistic for many people. But there is still much work that needs to be done before a polished, comfortable and overall worthy experience can be delivered to audiences that is as good as, if not better, than the movie experience today, but almost every source indicates that this new way of watching movies may be close to becoming a reality that isn't virtual.